All right, y'all. So I just made um, basically a track pants mock-up, and I'm going to show you how to use a mock-up to get the best quality version of the image, one, and then two, just how it works because it's not like a standard mock-up, right? So what you want to do first, and this works for all of my Procreate PNG file mock-ups. It'll just work better that way than the way that uh, you might typically do it. So like normally what I do is I just click plus, I click screen size, right? And I'll just insert a file like that. So when you do that, we're just going to give you an example, show you here. When you zoom in, you get these blurry lines, right? But that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we go here, you want to click at the top, you want to click import, right? And directly import the file without creating a new canvas first. So you just go straight into it, create a new file, pick the one that you want, right? And now you can see the detail is way, way better. Cause you know, dealing with Procreate is like, eh, all right. Now what you wanna do is first, what I do when I get started is I just get the little eraser, erase the little part that says version three. Cause that's ugly. That's just for reference, for, uh, reference purposes. Now the way this one is set up is different. It's got the details on the outside of the mockup. And that's just because it's easier to work with like that. Like if the details were already on the mockup, when you try to color it in, it's just not going to work the same. So the way that you use these details to put them on the actual pants, you want to click the little squiggly tool up here, right there. At the bottom, you want to make sure it says freehand, not rectangle, not these other freehand, right? Make sure it says freehand and make sure that color fill is not selected, not selected. Then you want to come up here. And you want to circle around the item like we'll start with the waistband and then come back down here and click copy and paste and what that's going to do it's going to make a new layer it's going to make it's just going to copy that top piece if you stay on the layer you want to click the little arrow and then move it down on top of the waistband so you have that detail there right but and then you just keep doing that so you go back to the first layer and you do that with all the details you want to use so if you want like the little lines you do the same thing you take it, you get the little squiggly joint. Don't worry about going outside of the white part. It doesn't matter. You go around it. Around it, around it, around it. Might want to take your time with that part since it's so close. Then click copy and paste here at the bottom. It's going to put it on a new layer for you. Click the arrows. And then you can move it over to where you want it to be. Now, if it's not really clicking in place for you, Zooming in helps, helps you get like a more accurate um, placement, something about it. That also works with Illustrator too. Like if you're having a problem with moving stuff around or getting it to line up perfectly, just zoom in as much as possible and that'll give you like more control with detail, right? And just to show you, like once you move those, you see they're on their own separate layers now, you go to the first layer and then you really just delete that top one there because you've already made a copy of it and you've already put it on your mock-up. And since it's on its own separate layer, like I'm gonna demonstrate with the lines, it makes it easier to color those elements too. If those lines were already on the pants, when you click on the lines to change the color, it's gonna change the color of the entire pant, like the lines on the entire pants, right? And we don't wanna do that. Sorry, I messed up y'all, so I just, I had to undo and do it again. My bad, this was supposed to be like a real quick tutorial was not supposed to take forever but here we are right so that's that's gone right now the thing is when you want to go and color it in for example now when you color in the waistband you still have the details on top but you can, you can see the color uniformly underneath right you can just keep doing that same thing with the side panels right for where we have the lines at now let's say you want the lines to be a different color you go to that one to that layer, right? And then pick the color you want. Let's just pick red so it can stand out. You can see what I'm talking about. Then you go here with the little squiggly thing again, click color fill, click automatic, and then click color fill like that. And then you just, uh, you just click on the lines. And then that's easy. You don't have to worry about it coloring in anything else. It's only gonna color the lines. If you're not getting good color with your lines, you also have this option here where it's called threshold. So when you click on the item you want to color, you just hold it down and then you move the scale back and forth. 
and that will determine how much is called in. So like, basically, so you have a, let's just undo it so you have a better example of what can happen. So we here, we don't call it, so we click it, and if we make it lower, I'm gonna make it real low so I can show you on the next line, right? The lower you make it, the less it colors it in. So like if it's real low, like, nah, it's not really making it that bad. So let's make it like that. It's just gonna color in less. Like you see, you see those little black lines on the outside? It's not really a dramatic effect for this particular item, but that's just to show you that you can adjust it. So if you make it bigger, you see it colors in more of it. See all the way till it'll co cover the whole page. So there you go. Usually 70 or 80 is pretty good or whatever, but you can adjust it for other things too when you can't color in the certain parts of an image if you're having trouble. But there you go. That's how it works. Quick tutorial. That's it.